At this real estate firm in Singapore, property agents are saving time and money thanks to ChatGPT. Home listings can be created within seconds with a few key words. It's the same for flyers for marketing, tenancy agreements, and even Google ads. Do you know that most agents are not born writer, right? And they, they even need to seek help and pay someone to do that job. So what ChatGPT have does is it is able to save time for the agents and by spending a few minutes of keying in all the necessary fields, the content will be generated within seconds. Agents say they only need to give ChatGPT's copy a check before editing it if needed. That gives them more time to focus on building relationships with clients. Their efficiency has been doubled or even tripled. Over at Microsoft, AI models help employees with anything from scheduling focus time to wellness breaks, reducing burnout and enhancing productivity. It's also being used to kickstart innovation, with generative AI being rolled out across Microsoft's apps to create presentations, analyze data, or write emails. For example, you're preparing PowerPoint, how do you use AI to help you generate some of this content, to kind of ideate ideas. Um, it's, it's more of an augmentation. These firms are among several in Singapore already making use of generative AI at the workplace. For those who haven't, industry insiders say it's important to begin experimenting to see what works and what doesn't. If your job is to generate written content, absolutely must uh, start experimenting with uh, generative AI models, right? Uh, so if you are uh, uh, writing marketing copy, sales copy, or you know, if you're an uh, entrepreneur, this can really help jumpstart the, the content creation. But there are some shortfalls. Firstly, generative AI is dependent on data it's fed, so it can be inaccurate. And that makes it less reliable for more complex tasks like coding, for example. When it comes to things without a necessarily an absolutely right or wrong answer, uh, marketing copy, images, it's a, it's a great tool. When it comes to things that have correctness, very strict correctness things, uh, criteria, that's when you want to be really careful. It might be helpful in generating something boilerplate, uh, but you really want to use it very, very careful and carefully. Generative AI lacks soft skills like EQ, and won't be able to pick up on social dynamics and nuances that often make relationships at work tick. There are also ethical concerns. So the question here now is, to what extent can our ethics and morals be codified? Right? To the extent that we are able to do that, right, then yes, AI takes it. Right? But I don't think so. That's why experts agree that AI is not a replacement for humans at work. Instead, it should be seen as something that complements what we already do. So if I take the analogy, it's like we are the captains and uh, this co-pilot is like your first officer. AI is kind of helping you to drive the future of work that you can really kind of take away a lot of manual work that you are driving and help you to drive and focus more on the cognitive part of it, more of the strategy, and be more focused and be more productive. The increase in productivity doesn't necessarily mean that companies will hire less. These tools or collaborators right, work faster, work more efficiently, so the throughput is faster. Right? So which then adds pressure on the, on the upper layer to take in all this work from the lower layer right, and to use it. So there will be a pressure to hire more people right, at the upper, higher value added right, layers. Still, it's inevitable that certain roles will be affected more than others. Around 14 million jobs could be lost to tech by 2027. And clerical roles are most at risk. Some lower level jobs will be replaced. Right? Uh, but these lower level jobs, right, to begin with, right, used very little, you know, human intuition, you know, you, 
human creativity, human decision making, right, a reasoning. On the flip side, millions of new roles are also expected to be created to support AI services, including roles like prompt engineers and AI trainers. This means we'll all have to keep upskilling. Top skills in demand include creative thinking, resilience and flexibility, as well as analytical skills. The World Economic Forum estimates that close to half of the world's labour force will have their core skills changed in the next five years. Companies and governments will have to work in tandem to make this happen at the scale and speed needed. Employees also need to buy into the mindset of lifelong learning as key to career sustainability. I don't think there's any end to this. Uh, it's just about how you can harness the power of technology to empower your work. But you got to be on the forefront of that innovation curve. Because if not, then you will be leave, left behind and that's exactly what will happen. It's replacement rather than enhancement.